So we had a little bit of a storefront come through today and there's some sporadic little snow flurries coming through, but it's just not cold enough for anything to stick at the moment. And we're also back on the noisy street of my own home. So you're just gonna have to bear with me on audio quality here. But nevertheless, I wanna welcome you guys back to our Forerunner Overland Build series, episode two. So today we're focusing on the roof rack and the awning. Now, I actually didn't film anything about installing these items onto the Forerunner. We already made videos talking about these issues on the Xterra, and I felt it was just kind of a little bit redundant to do it on the Forerunner as well. So I didn't really do any technical filmmaking or install guides or anything. It's just pretty simple. Lift something up, set something down, bolt it, and it's good to go. Because of the way the tent is mounted up on the Forerunner, we ended up hoisting it up manually rather than using a tractor. So that actually took four of us, three of us to lift it, and Taylor was up on the roof guiding it on, making sure it wasn't scraping anything in particular. The awning, on the other hand, was a little bit more technical, and I've been running into issues with the front runner roof rack, but I will get into that in a little later on this video. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and take you guys on the guided tour and show you what we have so far. When we had originally installed this rooftop tent on the Xterra, we had used the factory brackets that came with it to strap it down to the Gobi roof rack. And that was really fine and dandy for the Gobi rack and it worked really well. And I have to say the, the brackets that came with this tent over the breezeway tent are actually way better built and I have to give kudos to 2304 for making those. But to mount it on the front runner roof rack, we actually did not use any of them. We had to use front runner's own custom brackets in order to mount it up. And I'll show you here why we had to do that. So if we take a look at the rack up here, you'll notice that these slats are actually lower than the side rails here. And they have about an inch difference between the top of that and the top of the slat here. And if we look at the tent, they have a rail, which is where it mounts to the rack, that also sticks out by about an inch. So if this rail was mounted to the top of this slat here, the underside of this tent would actually almost be flush with the top of this rack here. And that sort of creates a problem for our table mount that we have right here because that kind of sticks up out and in the way and that was one thing we had to be careful as we lifted the tent up is that we weren't scraping anything and uh yeah there's a pretty tight fit there but we made it work so front runner provides their own mounting bracket that will raise the tent up by about an inch and cover that little gap there in order to make room for accessories like that latch. And so there are four brackets underneath. And the interesting thing is, is that they only use half the bolts that the original mounting brackets use. So it's kind of interesting. It's a little less than what I was expecting, but it actually holds together really well and I'm kind of surprised. So getting the tent up onto the rack and bolted down was a long and tedious process. There wasn't necessarily any hard work involved. It just took a long time to get things lined up, get the bolts tightened down. A lot of these bolts were in places that are really hard to reach and you can barely turn a wrench and you just gotta take your time with it and be patient. But that is basically all that went into mounting the tent. The next step was mounting the awning. And that one I was not 100% sure I was even gonna be able to do. It was a little bit of a gamble to do it. The brackets that I got from Front Runner, I was not 100% sure they would even fit the way I needed them to. But I couldn't get a hold of anybody at the company either at the time to verify as well. So I took a gamble and bought them. And let me show you guys how it's set up up there. So if you look on the far side of the rack right there, you see where that bracket is at. That is Front Runner's own universal awning bracket, and there is three of them lined up along the side of the vehicle. So I had two main concerns when it came to these universal awning brackets. By advertised on their website, Front Runner shows that these brackets are supposed to be mounted so that the awning sits higher. And if you look at these brackets carefully, they are taller on one side and shorter on the other. 
and the tall side is supposed to go on top, which makes the awning sit higher up on the rack. However, I knew that was going to be an issue interfering with the tent lid here, and it wouldn't allow the tent lid to open all the way to deploy the tent fully. So I knew that I was gonna have to mount the brackets upside down in order to lower the awning. And my two biggest concerns with doing that was if I flip the bracket upside down and put the longer side underneath, was it going to touch the roof line of the car and interfere and fit? And the second was that even if the brackets did fit, was the awning going to be able to attach without interfering with the driver or passenger side door and letting them open freely without contacting each other. And I have to say that it was a very, very, very tight fit. It was a close gamble and we ended up coming out on top on that. So if you look carefully up in the corner here, you can see how just how far that tent lid interferes with the awning and why those brackets need to be upside down in order to fit it lower. And as you can see here on the underside, if I open the door, there's just barely enough room for things to fit. These straps kind of get in the way but it's not a huge deal, but it is a very close fit. There's just, there's that much room between the bottom and my hand. There's, yeah, there's only like an inch and a half. And with the awning rolled up, it kind of tends to sag, which kind of reduces the amount of space in that gap. So it came very, very close, but we still clear it. Now the rooftop tent is actually not perfectly centered on top of the Forerunner, and it's a little hard to see, behind me here because everything's deployed. It actually looks kind of normal, but if we take a little closer look, we can actually see just how offset it is. So if you take a look over here, this seam basically marks where the tent folds up and where the edge sits. And you can see it extends out from the side of this roof rack. But if we take a look back up here and we look on the far side, you can see, oops, my brightness went away there. There you go. You can just see where the edge is there versus how far away it is from the edge of the racket. So it's pretty offset towards the passenger side. It's not a huge deal, but um, it just means I'm not going to be getting any front facing shots on the rig while it's on the road. While it's deployed, it actually looks pretty decent and looks normal, but when it's folded up, you can notice that the tent is offset and there is about a three to four inch gap between the awning and the tent. So all in all, I'm really happy with how this setup is coming along. I certainly could not have done this fitment on the roof without the front runner roof rack. Other roof racks like Prinsu just don't have that width in the real estate to make this fitment work the way I wanted it to. So that is the reason why I pretty much went with front runner over anybody else. However, one little issue that I've encountered with the front runner roof rack is the bracket for the awning in the rear. The weight of the awning does tend to vibrate and cause the side rail where it fits into the slats to kind of wobble a little, which kind of creates a squeak. And I've kind of been working with front runner customer service and trying to solve that and figure out how we can get rid of that. But that is just kind of the trade-off when you go with a bolt together rack versus a welded together rack. Welded racks don't make any sound. And um, that was one nice thing I liked about the Gobi rack on the Xterra. The front runner rack, I was concerned that would be an issue down the road and I was kind of prepared for that. But um, surprised enough, the tent doesn't make any sound at all. I'll hear occasional creaking from the rack itself as things kind of shift but I don't think it's anything to be concerned about. The main annoying thing that I have is just that squeaking that occurs when I'm on roads or hitting a bump. So other than that, there's not a lot to complain about on the front runner rack and the setup and running what I'm running. Everything kind of fits together really well, other than just a little bit of squeaking, which if it comes down to it, I can weld it together and make sure it never makes a sound again. But I'm gonna leave that as a last resort and hopefully we can resolve this issue with front runner customer service and see what we can do. And they've been really good at working with me on that, but um, we'll see what happens. So that is basically the wrap up on this walk around at the moment for the build. The next step is going to be getting the lift kit installed. I've done a lot of research and looking up what I want to get and what's available for the Forerunner. And I decided to go with an Icon Stage 2 suspension kit. And I went ahead and already ordered it, but it is on back order. I think we're waiting on the rear coils, which will probably come in next month. We'll see what happens schedule wise, but hopefully by spring and certainly summer, we can have this forerunner up and running and trail ready. So if you guys have any comments or questions that you wanna ask about this current setup that we're working on or any suggestions at all, I'm totally open and willing to hear you guys out. So leave a comment down below and I will get in touch with you guys. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.